Wow, come everyone, today I have a new build guide for the Necromancer for Season 2. Now looking behind me, as you noticed, I'm currently trying a Bone Mage Necromancer, and there's a lot of perks to this. The first thing is you'll be critical hitting a lot, and you'll be spawning as many as the Bone Storm as you can. Now one of the highlights for my Bone Necromancer build is that <laughs> the damage number looks great, right? Because there's a lot of flash damage numbers, a lot of bunciness, and the build actually feels very active and also action-like. One of the things I like about my build, if you want to notice, is that I tend to have lots of essence. So there are numbers of ways of getting more essence. Well, one way is, you know, you'll be consuming corpses to get more essence. The second way is you have number of lucky hit procs to gain lots of essence. Together with dash, you'll be doing lots of damage and gaining lots of more essence because of the build. Now very soon I'll show you guys the item choices and those legendaries and also unique effects will allow you to gain maximum amount of essence while doing so much more damage in terms of your bone storm and also the bone spears. Now the build itself is very straightforward. This is a classic bone storm. No, this is a classic bone spear necromancer build together with vulnerability damage and also critical strike damage. You can see that I'm currently testing in a tier 83 dungeon, and we don't really have much of a problem in terms of damage. We can be a little squishy because we're not using a defensive pet, and later I'll give you guys an alternative. If you plan to push for tier 100, you can be building into a defensive pet. But most of the time, we're very durable. <laughs> because we can have the ability to use Blood Mist in terms of a defensive spell, we can be doing lots of damage and also you know, reducing our cooldowns, consuming corpses for essence with a Bone Storm. Now fast forwarding a little bit to the boss. So against most of the boss, the Bone Necromancer build doesn't really have a problem. Now if you do, you know, if you do plan yourself closely, you can get multiple bounces of the Bone Spear. Unlike me, I'm currently not getting a lot of bounces, right? I'm currently getting one or two bounces. So if you time yourself correctly, you can be getting multiple bounces, which we'll talk about in the rotation of the spells. But most of the time, we do decent damage. One of the downsides I tend to realize against the boss is I tend to consume too much essence than needed. And once I cast my Bone Storm, as you guys can notice over here, suddenly I get a lot more essence back and lots of more damage comes back as well. So there's something I want to share with you guys in terms of doing more damage against a single target. Now over here, I have the build available for you guys on Mobilitix, and you can go through all the gears and also the choices of the legendary effects and also the, the usage of different aspects and also unique items. So those is ready for you guys, so I don't have to go through those in too much details. What I want to do is I want to come over to my items and I want to highlight a few things. And you can see all the unique items, all the uber unique items I plan to use for this build in the future. So this build currently we do not use any uber unique item. And everything is readily available in the game with unique items and also the legendary effects. So right away you can see we're using the unique helmet. We're using the unique pants to give us unstoppable, give us more damage, close damage reduction, bonus damage, and also more essence gain. We're using the flicker step to give us additional cooldown reduction to the bone storm, which is essential for a build for lowering the cooldowns, dealing more damage, getting more barrier, and also consuming corpses for essence. Finally, we'll be using the little swore. This is very powerful in terms of maximal essence, spawning additional bone storm, and also getting us more primary essences. Now my choice of weapon is going to be the one-handed sword. So this allows me to use the shield and also the one-hand sword. Most of the legendary effects are pretty straightforward, and you can see the stats of my glove. I was actually pretty lucky with this glove. You can see those stats are pretty good, right? So in terms of the chairs, we're going for the bone storm gave us a barrier. Because we'll be spawning multiple bone storms with Lipner's Wall, this is actually quite powerful. The amulet is quite straightforward. One thing you want to notice is you want to get as much essence cost reduction as you can, and then going for any of the passive that boosts your bone spell damage will be really good. And finally for the rings, I'm getting the bone storm consuming corpses as one of the centerpiece of a build to gain more essence. So the combination is actually quite interesting. Let me try to show you guys over here. So by consuming corpses with your bone stone, because you can now consume corpses, every corpses will generate six essence. And if you do have any item that provides more resource generation, six essence can become maybe eight essence or even 10 essence. Now, one thing with the Paragon board is that with the consuming of corpses, you'll be gaining more damage like the copy over here. 
and it's quite important for us to have a spell that automatically consumes corpses. I have seen a similar build that used the corpse explosion, but this will take active spell slot. And the difference between here is having the bone storm consuming corpses, it is both defensive and also offensive because of this legendary effect. Now this also works with the scent of death legendary aspect, legendary knot, which allows us to gain more damages when there are no corpses. So let's briefly talk about the skill tree. In terms of the skill tree, notice that I'm one point short to get additional damage with the core spells, but I think that's okay. I went for more defensive and also utility spells. But if you're not planning to get that much defensiveness, you can take away the 4 to 5 and come over here for additional damage if you're going for a single target boss. We're getting 3 points in the healed flash, and additionally 3 points into the consuming of corpses to deal more damage and also more essence. We're not getting the additional range or distance to damage to enemies, because I tend to play as a melee mage, and you can even see that I have lots of close damage reduction on my boots over here, and even on my chest I have close damage reduction. And even on my weapon, I have close damage increase against, you know, close enemies. So usually the bow mage is supposed to be played in terms of a range style, but for me personally, I'd like to play as a melee mage. Now, because we're a little short on points, I didn't go into the close damage reduction over here, but you can also be going for this as well. So, over here, we're going with a standard part with sacrificing minions and also the bone storm. One thing to notice over here is the lower in the cooldowns of your bone, bone spells is mostly focused on the bone storm. And because I'm using a flicker step, I decided to not go into any points into rapid ossification because when I dash, I reduce cooldowns by 4 or even you know, 8 or 12 seconds. And because of these boots, I'm getting much, much more, you know, much lower cooldowns because of this. And I don't think I need the additional points in terms of the passives for lower cooldowns, just for the bone storm. Now, briefly going through the paragons. So you can see my paragons on the Paragon Builder. I'll just briefly talk about my choice of sockets. So here we're going with Control Glyph to give us a damage increase and also will be constantly slowing enemies. So the slow enemies come from the Decrypify and this allows us to see as a way of controlling enemies. We can also be stunning enemies with Corpse Tendril, which is very powerful, combined with the legendary effects that give us critical chance and also critical damage. Now because we're going with vulnerability damage and also critical damage, we'll go with Exploit over here. And here you can see I am also going with the increase of critical damage with Essence. Now over here we're going with Imbiber, which allows us to deal more damage while healthy. This is a personal choice because this feels like the most worthy glyph for me to deal more damage. You can also go with increased damage while 4 to 5, and if you play close mage you can even go with Terror Terror, which allows you to deal more close damage. Finally, I'm also going with Sacrificial, which gave us more damage against Elite, more resistance, and also additional stats. <laughs> so one thing that's interesting about the build is, I was able to get over 400 dexterity because of the additional bonus stats I enjoy over here. So just to show you guys, if I take away this point, notice that we're actually, okay, we actually still got it. So some of the additional stats like the 14 dexterity and also willpower allows me to achieve all the maximum perks over here. Actually, I'm a little short on willpower. I'll get a point in for your willpower, so we get all the bonuses over here. Now, briefly going through the Vimpatica power of choice. We're going with Ravenous, which gives us additional attack speed, which is actually very powerful in terms of just overall damage. We're going with Anticipation to lower our ultimate cooldowns. Because the ultimate is focused on, you know, everything about the build with defensive, offensive, and also ability to gain more essence by consuming corpses, this is actually really good. We're also going with additional 4 to 5 and also critical chance about 4 to 5. We're going with Metamorphosis to provide us with Unstoppable, and also this will give us the restoration of Essence in combination with the pens over here. Now, finally, we go on Prior on the Week to give us additional ways of vulnerable, make enemies more vulnerable, and deal additional vulnerable to enemies. Now, it is possible, guys, that if you're not using Anticipation, you can go for the the touch, the accursed touch, which will allow you to have more ways of spreading the vampatic curse, which gives you more ways of getting more vulnerable. But because we're already using the explode glyph, 
and we have ways of constantly applying a vulnerability. I don't think we really need that one. I actually prefer the lower cooldown reduction. Now briefly going through the rotations of the skills for this build. Because I like to play as a melee mage, I tend to get close and also personal against enemies with my Bonestone to gain additional armor, or additional barriers, I mean. Now, because we have the Litless War, you want to be consuming corpses with your Bonestone while casting the Corpse Tendril as much as you can, because this will boost your damage and also critical chance and also critical damage. If you do find yourself a little more vulnerable, losing too much HP, you can use your Blood Mist as a way of defensive capacities, and this will drop more corpses. Additionally, guys, make sure you dash into enemies. And this is one of the ways I play as the close, close mage. Because as the Necromancers, you can play as a ranged Necromancer, but if I dash into enemies, I'll be lowering my cooldowns of my ultimate, which allows me to deal more damage. Notice my cooldowns went from like 13 seconds to 1 second cooldown. So constantly I'm dashing into enemies and I'm using the Blood Mist as a defensive spell. Now one of the highlights of the build is definitely gaining a lot of Essence. So there are multiple ways of getting more Essence. One of the ways is coming from, you know, just normal attack with your basic spells. But I tend to knock normal attack a lot. Because I'll be gaining more Essence by consuming corpses with Corpse Tendril, which only consume one corpses, but also with Bone Storm, which spread around on the map and consumes a lot of corpses. So this allows me to constantly keep my essence and finally if i'm short on essence i can dash into enemies and this will restore me 50 more essence so together with number of ways of restoring essence all you need to do is keep yourself alive and you can deal tons of damage the best part about the build is about reflecting and also bouncing those bone spears and also bone shards if you time yourself correctly and also keep your distance like what i do over here you can potentially bounce multiple bone spears and also bone shot onto enemies. Now one way to do this is reflecting on the wall coming back to hit multiple bone shots onto enemies. Another way is to keep your distance and allow the bone spears to travel at maximum distance and by bouncing you can hit multiple times. Now this is not the best demonstration of this because I constantly play as a melee mage. But because you have the training dummy now, if you guys want to try, I'll show you guys on the next video how you can bounce multiple times and to deal the most damage with your bone shot. Now one thing about fighting the boss is that you tend to run out of essence if you spam too much of your bone spear. And that's what I did over here. So what I re really should have done is, maybe I should have saved a little essence and also only spin essence once I have over 50% essence. Also, I should be dashing into enemies more often. And by dashing to enemies, I can become unstoppable and I'll get so gaining more essence, lowering my bone storm cooldown. Once you have the rotation of additional bone storm, you can see that by consuming additional corpses on the floor, I'll be dealing way more damage and the boss dies really fast. So what I do over here is I'll provide you guys with a replay of me testing out on tier 83 over here. We can definitely push for higher and just on the chance you guys want to push for higher, so let me show you guys over here. We can be going with additional pens that provide us with the disobedience aspects. This is not a top row pen so with only 48% maximal armor. But having a pens replace them over here means that you will gain a little less essence from dashing and a little less damage. But you can get tons of defensive stats like total armor, maximum life, damage reduction, and additional armor coming from the legendary effects to push for tier 100 much, much, much more safer.
time. Ready.
Now, if you guys haven't subscribed, it is a really good time to do so because I'll be covering tons of Diablo 4 related topics and also videos and also guides. We'll be looking to the top meta builds, no meta builds, leveling up, and also Paragon tricks. We'll also look into the latest events and also official updates and also changes to different characters and also different builds in the game. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and also turn the notification on because a lot of you who are watching the videos have not subscribed. You can see 80% of the viewers who are watching our videos have not subscribed. So make sure you subscribe to stay tuned for the latest update for Diablo 4.